I'm going to be showing you guys how I inoculate my fava beans here. These are fava beans. There's that trusty hoary hoary knife here. So again, what we're doing is we're inoculating my fava beans here. That's how you get those nodules on the roots. Everybody wants to say that their legumes fix nitrogen into the soil. Again, legumes actually do not fix nitrogen into your soil. The bacteria that's attached to the roots, which are your nodules on the roots, actually it sets it into the plant and they create a symbiotic relationship between the two. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna dig this fava bean plant up. And why am I doing that? Is because I wanna show you what the nodules on the roots look like and how you get the nodules on the roots and what they actually do. And the reason why you want the nodules on the roots, and if you look at this stuff down here, I mix wood chips in my soil. That was the thing that kind of threw everybody off when I said I was mixing wood chips in my soil. That's a no-no. From the beginning, mixing wood chips in your soil is a no-no. Unless, unless you have a nitrogen fixing bacteria in your soil. Not only do I use the nitrogen fixing bacteria, which is a leguminosarum bacteria, I'm also using the arbuscular fungus that's also attached to these so that arbuscular fungus spreads its roots out. And mixing wood chips into the top three inches of the soil is forcing the legume plants to communicate with the bacteria in the soil. And what, what do I mean by that? Is when you mix the wood chips into the soil, it actually robs the nitrogen from the plants. So if there's no nitrogen in the soil, that forces your legumes to have to communicate with the uh, bacteria that's in the soil and they form that symbiotic relationship. And that's where the nodules on the roots came from. So I've been experimenting with it. In theory, it made sense to me, but to see it actually work where I have more nodules on these roots than I ever had. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. And like I said, I pulled it up the other day and everybody talks about nitrogen fixing, but I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This live on camera. You see all those nodules on the roots there? Look like little bumps. Those are nitrogen fixing bacterias. There are millions of bacteria in that. This is what fixes the nitrogen. You see that on the end there? This is initially how thick the roots are of this plant. But you look how thick that is right here. Those are the nodules that just consumed the roots there. If you have pink and you see it, they look like a little peaches color. That's telling you that they are actively fixing the nitrogen. If you have white and they're a little smaller, that means that you have the bacteria but it's not effectively or efficiently pulling the nitrogen from the air. And I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in there. Yeah, but again, the point is having those nodules on the roots is what pulls that nitrogen out of the air and it feeds it to the plant. And by me mixing wood chips into my soil, which is something that we've all been told not to do, and I will say the same, do not mix uh, wood chips into your soil unless you have nitrogen fixing bacteria in your soil that can offset the drawdown that the nitrogen is going to take out of your soil. I have uh, alfalfa growing on the other side and I did the exact same thing with the alfalfa. The alfalfa is also a legume but it uses a different bacteria than the one that's on these fava beans. The ones that's on the fava beans are called leguminosarum the ones that I use on the, uh, the alfalfa is called a melalati. And that bacteria feeds that nitrogen to the plant. So you bypass everything that's in the soil. I wanna be able to take you to the garden, show you exactly what I'm doing, the process and the end results. And that's why my videos take so long for me to do because I'll generally start the video let's say one month and it may be the end of the season before you even see the video. So that's why I don't post videos as often as everybody else because I actually try to put the whole video together before I show it. 
because I want you to see the whole process because I guarantee you, if I told anybody before I showed this that I was mixing wood chips in my soil, they would have told me I was insane. They would have said, I'm going, my plants are gonna be dying. They're gonna be starved for nitrogen, all of those things. So what I learned early on in doing this content creating thing was you show and prove. So that's what I'm trying to show you guys is just thinking a different way, not necessarily following what everybody else is doing, looking at what everybody else is doing, paying close attention, but finding your own path and trying to figure out where you fit in in between the cracks because everybody's doing this content creating. Now we got AI doing all of this stuff where every video you pop up is an AI video, but there's nothing like someone being able to sit in front of you and answer the questions as you ask them. And not only that, show you what it is that they're doing. So with all of that being said, this is my black strap molasses unsulfured black strap molasses here. And I've had this thing literally for probably three or four years. I don't know, you can see how, look at the labels on this thing. That's how old it is. But a little goes a long way. I like to use the black strap molasses to inoculate my seeds because it's a sugar source. And that's what the bacteria uses to feed off of until the roots of the beans or the peas come out. So they'll feed off of that sugar, multiply, and then by the time that the seeds start to sprout, they'll attach themselves to the roots of the plant and bringing that nitrogen from the air, feeding it to the roots in exchange for the sugars now that the plant is giving. So it's a beautiful relationship. Everybody gets something out of it. We could learn something from that open up my uh, molasses here and I'm just going to take just a little spoonful, not even a whole spoonful. It's probably like a teaspoon here. See the molasses there. Unsulfur black strap molasses. And this is how I inoculate my seeds. Just take that over, drop it into the cup. So this is my molasses here. And then what I'm gonna do, I don't even wanna put a lot of water in it, just a little bit of water. And this is rain water here. And if you don't have rain water, you can just let the water sit out for a while. And you see, you're just gonna mix it up. You wanna get as much of that molasses mixed into the water as possible. Now I like to do that usually with warm water, especially if it was like in the middle of the summer, you could take your water canister and sit it out into the sun, let that heat warm it up. But that's basically what that looks like, just molasses water. Now, what we're gonna do with that afterwards, we're gonna create a slurry. And this is my bacteria in this bag here. And this is a leguminosarum bacteria in here. And what I'm gonna do is just pour some of that in there. I wanna create a slurry. Now these are sensitive to light. So once you do this, you have to make sure that you go ahead and get these in the ground within two hours. I'm gonna show you the beans again so you can see the difference in what they look like before and what they look like after. And then we're gonna go and plant them in another bed over there. I got another bed that I've been waiting to do this video on. You see the color of the beans here? I don't wanna flip them out the thing. So that's how clean they are. These are fava beans. Now, and what we're gonna do is basically we're just gonna drop those in our cup, in our slurry. And we want those to come out to look like there's mud on them. And what it is that molasses water, of course we know molasses is sticky, so that's our film that's gonna to stick to the seeds. And what that does is, like I said, the molasses is also sugar, which the bacteria feed off of. So until the seeds sprout 
that gives the bacteria something to feed off of and multiply while they're down there. You see how muddy the seeds look now? That's the bacteria sticking to it. That is what we mean when we say inoculating our seeds. Basically, it looks like mud, but you see how that stuff is sticking to the seeds now? That's when your seeds are being inoculated. I come over here, and this is the other bed that I have. This is building soil. See how dark and rich that is though? It's compost. And we get our beans. You see how that, that molasses is sticking to that spoon? That's the bacteria, that's how it sticks to the seeds as well. And while I'm not gonna punish you and make you sit here and watch me do the whole thing, I just wanted you to see the difference in what those seeds look like. You see how the dirt looks like dirt on it? That's that inoculant that's on there. And then I'll basically just go down, I'll drop the seeds on top first. I'll go down just like this here so I can see everything that I'm doing. It's kind of like a mental exercise. It helps keep you fresh. So you remember what it is that you were doing and you create a little system along the way. And we're just gonna do this first little row here that's sticking to the seeds. That's what you want. And even with that, you still have a little bit of that bacteria on the spoon when you're dropping it down there in the hole. See that bacteria on there? Now you're probably wondering like, well, you say you're gonna put it in two inches into the soil. And then I'll just take something like this. You see how you got the flat end on this little bamboo? I wanna go at least two inches into the soil. And that's gonna give me the depth that I want going in there. When I'm out here in the garden, this is more of like a mental exercise for me. I like just thinking when I come out here. <laughs> 